Welcome to the 2023 Winter Classic Student Cluster Competition Studio Update Show. Now, here are your hosts, Dan Olds and Addison Snell. Hello and welcome to this next edition of the 2023 Winter Classic Invitational Student Cluster Competition, Competition Studio Update Show. I'm Dan Olds. Addison Snell, my broadcast partner, is out on assignment. But today, we are talking to the mentors from Oak Ridge National Lab, who just did a fantastic job in putting together a uh, pretty challenging challenge, what I'm calling the blast challenge for the students. Uh, let's go ahead and have you introduce yourselves. Let's start with you, Veronica. Uh, sounds good. Thanks for having us, Dan. Um, my name is uh, Veronica Melissa Vergara. I'm a group leader here at Oak Ridge National Lab. Uh, our, my group is the System Acceptance and User Environment, and we've been helping uh, with the Winter Classic Invitational since uh, 2022. Yeah, two years now. Yeah. So it's a very exciting opportunity to have us uh, and then get to work with the students. It's a lot of fun. It really is. And uh, one of your partners in crime, let's start with what's goes with you next, Dan. Dan Dietz. Hi, yeah, I'm Dan Dietz. I'm HVC engineer at Oak Ridge in Veronica's group. Uh, my role this year for the competition was, I'd say, a high-level organization, kind of helping hold things together. And I was very excited to, to work with the teams again this year. Uh, it's a lot of fun and, and great for the students. And it really came together well. So good job on, on your organization part of it. Uh, Suzanne, you're another familiar face from last year. Yeah. Hi, I'm Suzanne peretti Kuhn. I'm an HPC engineer here at Oak Ridge National Lab, and I work in a group that's similar to Veronica's, but we handle the production stuff. So I helped arrange the material for the HPC crash course that we gave the students to prepare them for the blast challenge. And you folks put together a lot of material. We'll talk about that in a minute, but uh, it was a, a soup to nuts tour of HPC and Oak Ridge and everything. Elijah, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, uh, I'm Elijah Makati. Uh, I'm an HPC engineer over here at Oak Ridge National Lab. I've uh, been on Veronica's team uh, uh, about a year, getting close to a year and a half now. Uh, and I have worked with uh, John, uh, Dan, Veronica and Suzanne uh, we're putting the challenges together for this year's Winter uh, Classic. Uh, we, we, were quite, uh, we were quite anxious how it was going to go. And I think uh, it's been it's been awesome. It's been great. And I think it has been a good opportunity for the students to learn as well. And uh, among us, um, having to help the students. Yes. Fantastic. John, last but not least. Hi, I'm Holman. Um, I'm an HPC engineer in Veronica's group as well. Um, the kind of key role I had with the Winter Classic was going through and helping identify the problem to use and kind of helping Elijah to go through and design some of the challenges that we're going to have him do for it. Had an absolute blast with that, trying to go through and speak. design something. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, it was a lot of fun going through, trying to design something to kind of give them something a little different than maybe what they're used to seeing and quite enjoy that opportunity. Yes. And it was quite different. If, if um, let me try and explain it simply and see if I get close. It looks like you're having them model how a blast will propagate through essentially an, an image, right? Yeah. Yeah. The challenge finally picked was a traditional hydrodynamics blast wave. Um, that essentially had a overpressurized region in the center that's going to expand outwards. Um, and we did it over an image and um, mm -hmm. so they could kind of see how it impacted that. Yes, yes. And along the way, they learned some new tools with uh, Athena and Cocos. And uh, it was very cool that uh, you taught them about meshes. Yeah, Anybody want to pick up on that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I'm just uh, kind of looking through your slides. You, you folks put together a heck of a lot of training. I'm assuming some of it was pre-existing, right? 
Yeah, the HBC crash course material was, um, but I think John, Dan, and Elijah and Veronica put together all of the blast wave training. And that was a lot of material. And uh, it it was very good. What? Uh, let me ask you, uh, Dan, since you were sort of a, a focal of this, what do you think was the toughest part for the students in this? I think learning a new system is always challenging, right? Like all mm -hmm. of the, the job schedulers are different in every system that they've used throughout uh, throughout this competition. So I think maybe that's the biggest challenge and just taking what you've learned so far and putting it to some new system, learning the new syntax with all the, the intricacies with the systems that you're working with. Um, true, true. And actually, I've got to hand it to you on your training that uh, nine of the 12 teams successfully completed uh, your challenge, which is actually better than the number of teams that completed HPCG. It's impressive. That's very impressive. It's, yeah. a, it's a, a great testament to, uh, to the training that you did. We, we had a wide range of scores, though, scoring from 20 all the way up to 100. Um, who was, uh, tell me a little bit about the scoring process on this one. What were they judged on? We went through and broke it down based on the challenges we gave them. Um, essentially we kind of had them go through first experiment with different meshes and see the impact of, for example, how many levels of mesh refinement they're using, um, how coarse or fine the grid was. Um, and then we went through and had them actually go through and visualize this simulation. So we had them go through, use a tool called visit. We had set up on our system to go through and we actually had one team. They went as far as making a movie of their blast wave propagating through, which went over and above what we asked for. Um, then we had them scale out across the system. So essentially we evaluated it on, um, how much experimentation they went through and did with the uh, simulation grid, that, mm -hmm. um, what numbers they are able to achieve, things along those lines, and then any observations they are able to make. So how many different scored components were there? There was five. Five, five different score components we broke it down. Okay. Okay. And uh, it, I mean, to me, from looking at this, it looks like uh, probably the top six teams kit got something in all five anybody scoring say 60 and above looks like they probably got all of the way through all five does that make sense yeah yeah we had a majority get through um at least to some extent uh, that was kind of the biggest differentiator i'd say is how much or how little of the challenges they did we kind of tried to design it to give them more than they could go through and work with and Good. See who did what, though. So. <laughs> seemed to work out well to get some differentiation there. That's very good. Uh, hey, Veronica, are you going to be looking for any student interns or any full-time uh, folks coming down the road in the next few months? Uh, yeah, actually, we have uh, on the full-time positions, we have two positions open, and one is an entry-level position in our group, but they're also in Suzanne's group. So we have are looking for HPC engineers. Um, so if anybody's interested or anybody's graduating from the set of teams, uh, we'll definitely be interested in talking with them. Uh, and we also have our internships are, are back on full swing this summer. So last summer, it was the first year that we were trying to do back on site. So we have a smaller number of students, but this year we're trying to go back to pre-pandemic numbers. So it'll be lots of students will be around. And if you're interested in like opportunities, uh, definitely send us a note. Uh, I think we're still all in the Slack space. Uh, so if you want to learn more, we can uh, tell you more about specific opportunities for interns and um, any that are for graduate, the students are already graduated. Fantastic. And uh, I know I can think of a couple right offhand that would be interested in this, and they have kind of a bent towards machine learning. Is that useful to you? 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, we have more and more uh, uh, of our user base now is leaning towards using machine learning one way or another. So yeah. ourselves are having to support like more machine learning users than we did before. And also initially, like we weren't as familiar with machine learning because most of our users were in the modeling and simulation camp. So as we have gotten more and more expertise in that, um, we definitely need folks that know about it so that they can help our users. Very good. Very good. Um, what was it that, that had you putting together this application this year? Is there anything special? You just want to throw something different at them? Uh, I think from my standpoint, I've been covering with the lead developer, um, Philip Creep, for a few months. And uh, it's just been a very easy to work with code that's been robust, that's X scale capable, and run across a diverse collection of leadership class systems and um, it seems like a easy enough opportunity to bring students into something new that they could see. And um, so that was kind of where that decision came from. Um, kind of wanted to give them something they could see what they're actually simulating. And that's where the visualization piece that's, came in. And I like that. Had a lot of fun picking that. How large did their problems eventually scale? Um, they were able to get out to eight nodes um, is what we had on the system that were available. Okay. Were they using accelerators on those notes? Yeah. Okay. So did uh, the students take advantage of that? Yes. We actually had one team. Um, so we initially designed the scaling studies. So they used only one GPU um, mm -hmm. per node. And one team was clever enough to figure out how to use all six um, hey, on hey. this node and went, again, above and beyond what we asked for. So that was really cool to see. That was, that's very cool to see. Am I, can I assume that that was the team that got the most points on it? Yes. Okay. So a shout out. Um, and they'll know by the time this airs to UC Santa Cruz, who went above and beyond in grabbing as much GPU power as they could. Very nicely done. So any thoughts about this competition versus the first time you did it or anything along those lines? I think so. I mean, like we learned last, uh, it's the first time we've done like this virtual only uh, type of student cluster competition. And uh, last year, uh, we we're trying to figure out what is a good way to get the students to learn, but also to do the specific challenges. And I think this year, um, John and Elijah and Dan and Susan put together like a very nice uh, collection of like, not just like, okay, you learn this one thing, but you learn all these different things that you will need for a full pipeline. Uh, and also the idea of having them have to think about like, can I do better if I tried this first or which problem should I run? Cause that helps also with the competition part because it's not only about the learning part, but we also want them to critically think like, oh, if I try to run this problem, am I going to finish in the time I have? Or maybe I should just try two of the smaller ones and get more points and strategize. A little strategic, a little strategery in there. I like that. Well, you know, that that's the thing that I like about the Oak Ridge challenges, both this year and last year, is you do throw something different at the students than sort of the standard HPC stuff. And you you seem to pull a little more out of them than some of the other modules. And uh, it's a great thing to see. And uh, the students got a lot out of this and really appreciate uh, all of your efforts. So thank you very much. And I really appreciate you taking the time for this interview as well. So thank you. And we will hopefully talk to you again next year. You have a whole year now to come up with something fiendish for them. <laughs> Yes, definitely. I mean, we always uh, appreciate the opportunity to support the competition. And if I can put a shameless plug for SC23, if you're a team yes. that already participated and you're a student cluster, interested in student cluster, SC23 has an indie SEC competition that is also virtual. Uh, and then the student cluster competition that you actually show in the floor and you have a cluster, put together a cluster on site. So if you're interested in those opportunities, those are applications should be open um, and Feel free to ping us. Dan is very involved with students at SC this year uh, and can give you more info too. Both fantastic. Dan. <laughs> <Andy>. <laughs> well, fantastic. Thank you all again. We couldn't do the competition without mentors like you. We really appreciate how generous you've been with your time and uh, with your expertise and your hardware. Thanks again. And we will talk to you soon. 
Thank you. Thank you.